Hey guys and welcome back to another Unregined 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a countdown timer and at the end of the timer something will happen, in this case the game is going to end. Now the reason I'm doing this for this particular video is because I've got a mini game, let's say it's kind of an arcade mini game, you have a set amount of time you can play, so maybe you can only play the game for 5 minutes or 10 minutes or 1 minute or anything like that, or not even just because it's an arcade game but maybe you're getting competitive with friends and you want to see who can kill the most amount of enemies in a minute or in five minutes. So that's what we're setting up today. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to do. So just for showing us off in the tutorial, I've got it set to 15 seconds, which you can see in the top right corner is counting down from 15, currently at seven, and when we get to the end of the timer, I'm going to get a widget come up on screen saying game over, and two seconds later, the game is going to close. Now you can obviously customize the ending part to do absolutely whatever you like. I've just done a very basic example there to show that, and I'm not going to be going too much into that part today, I'll show you how to do it, but you can customize it to get it perfect for you. So to show maybe how long you survived, how many enemies you killed, a restart button, a button to the main menu, all that good stuff. And I do have different videos showing how to do that as well if you wanted. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a widget to display how long we have left. So we don't need to do this first, but it's just going to be easier for us to reference it later on if we already have it created. So I'm going to do this in a new folder I've made, so content, game files, and in my timer folder, right click in here, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint, and I'm just going to simply name this timer widget like so, as it is a widget to display how much time we have remaining in the game. I'm going to open that up straight away. In here, what I'm going to simply do is get some text, put it in the top right corner, and anchor it to the top right as well. I'm going to size the content and set the justification to be to the right hand side, so it's aligning the text to the right, and I'll give it a small outline of three as well. What I'm going to do is in the text, I'm going to write what I want it to display, just so I can have a reference for where I want to position it. So I want it to display time remaining, and then let's put 60, just so we know the biggest it's going to be for me anyway. So it's going to look like that, so I'm going to move it over to be there, and anchor it there as well. So move the anchor to where the text is going to be, and that's going to look great for me. Again, set it up to look however you like, but that's going to work for me. Then make sure to select the text, and then where we've typed in the text again, we're going to go to bind next to it and create a binding. And this is so we can dynamically update this to actually be how much time we have left. So we can do that very simply. I'm going to create a new variable on the left over here, naming this time remaining. And this is going to be a float like so. Compile and save that. And now we just need to update this variable for how much time we have left. But we also need to make sure we're displaying this. So what I'm going to do is get the time remaining float there. And out of this, I'm going to get a two text float like so. Now the reason I'm using this is because I want it to be a whole number, not a float. So the float will be 13.927 or whatever it actually is. I just want it to be the whole number, i.e. 13. Now we can use something called truncate, which will round it from a float into an integer, i.e. a whole number, but this is the wrong rounding method for what I want. So if you hover over it, you can see it says rounds A towards zero. That means even if it's 13.9, it will round down to 13, not 14, which isn't what I want, because then it might skip some numbers every now and then, which I find when I was testing this out, it does do that. So I don't want to use that rounding method, I want to use the two text instead. And to change the rounding, what we can do is open up the advanced settings for it here. So you can see we have the rounding mode and all these different options here. I do want to leave the rounding mode as half to even, because if you hover over it, you can see it rounds to the nearest place, equidistant ties goes to the value which is closest to an even value, which is how you would round in normal everyday life anyway when you're doing maths. As you can see there, again, their example is 1.5 becomes 2, 0 0.5 becomes 0. So essentially 13.9 will be 14, not 13. Everything we can leave the same except this bottom maximal fractional digits, I'm going to put as zero. And that's again just making sure this is in whole integer and a whole number instead of a float. So instead of it being 13.9, it will be 14. So again, this is just to make sure that the timer is displaying accurately what we want it to. I'm going to close those settings, come out of the return value, and get a format text like so. Now we are going to disconnect it from there by holding down Alt and left clicking on it. The result go into the return value of the return node there. Inside the format, I'm going to write what I want it to display, which for me is time remaining, colon, space, and then to input the actual time, 
is input the open and close brackets with a kind of squiggle on them. So that one there, and you get that by holding down left shift and pressing on the square brackets. So we've got it opened, then we're just going to write time and then close it. Now you can see when we hit enter, it says time remaining, and then we can now input a variable into the time, which I'm going to have as the return value of that two text float there. So again, you can see what it's going to do now is it's going to display time remaining, colon, space, and then this time variable we have here, which is perfectly what I want. So it would display it like this, time remaining 60. So that's how we set that up. So I'm going to compile, save, and that is all we need to do in this widget like so, because again, all we now need to do is update this time remaining float to update the text. So let's close that like so. And I'll come back to this widget you'll see now later on. What we need to do now is actually create the timer to be updating this variable. So I'm going to do that in my game mode blueprint. So I'm going to go to content, third person VP, blueprints, third person game mode, as that is the one which I'm using. But use whichever one it is for you. So to find that out, what you can do is go to window, world settings, like so, and then where you have the game mode override, press the magnifying glass there and use the one which you're using. Now to create a timer, what we're going to do is use a built-in function called a timer. So I'm going to right click and add a custom event, naming this one game timer, like so. Out of this, I'm going to set timer by event. Now what this is going to do is it's going to set a timer, which we can set to be however long we want. And the event here is going to fire off after the timer has finished. So when this timer gets to zero and it's finished doing it and it's finished counting down, it's going to fire off this event. This event is going to be our game over screen or whatever it is for when this timer goes to zero. So again, for me, that is finishing the game. So I'm going to drag out of event and add a new custom event, naming this game over or end game or anything like that. I'm not going to do anything with that just at this very moment, but I've just set it up to show you that's what the event is doing. And so when we compile, we don't get any errors. Now this time here is how long you want the game to last. So if you want it to last for a minute, you put in 60. If you want it to last two minutes, you put in 120, because this is time in seconds. So just for the purpose of the tutorial, I want it to be quite quick. So I'm going to set it to 15. So I'm going to input 15 seconds in there. And if you want the player to be able to choose it, what you can do is right click, promote a variable and allow the player to just update and change that variable maybe in an options menu or anything along those lines. And we don't need to change anything else with this timer. Out of the return value, what we're going to do is get timer remaining time by handle. So what it's going to do is just output how long is left in this timer. We're not going to use that just at the moment, but I'm just showing you how we're going to get it to access it later on. Out of the execution of the timer, we're going to create a widget like so, and this widget is going to be our time widget, which we just set up now. The return value, we're going to right click, promote a variable, naming this timer reference. And that's so we can easily access this whenever we want, so we can update the time remaining variable. And out of that, we're going to add to viewport, so the player can now see this on their screen as well. Now what we've done is we've made it, so we now have a timer counting down from 15, or whatever it is which you want, so this will now be the length of the game. But we also want to set it up to update this variable so the player can see it updating in real time as well. So what we're going to do is underneath this, right click and add a new custom event, naming this one as update time, which is going to do what it sounds. It will update this time variable so we know how long is left. So we're going to do another timer. So we're going to set timer by event. Now for this one, the event is going to be that custom event function as well. And the time is going to be one. So every one second, our variable will update. Now, because this update time is going into there, it's going to be looping. Now we could tick looping as well, but I'm going to do it this way instead. You can do it either way if you want, but this just makes more visual sense for me so I can see it better from afar. Again, up to you. So the update time will go into the timer. After one second, that time will call this update time event again, and we'll continue just doing this loop. So we'll always be updating this timer every one second for as long as we want. But we also want to actually make sure we are updating the value. So we can get our timer reference, which we just made. And out of this, just set time remaining, which is again the float we made while we we're in there. The execution will go into the set timer by event. Now the time remaining float wants to be this return value, which we got up here from the get timer remaining time by handle off of the first set timer by event. So connect that in there. So again, what it's going to do is it's going to get how long is left in the total game time, which for me again is 15 seconds, and put that into the time remaining every one second 
as that is all the player needs to see is they're only seeing it update every second so we only need to do it every second. There's no point doing off event tick as that can lag out the game which we obviously don't want to mess with and again it's going to be rounding it perfectly for how we want which we set up in the widget as well. So now to call this function event here what we need to do is go back to where we add to viewport here off of the first game timer and simply call function update time there and again that will do a perfect nice loop for us updating it every one second. And that's pretty much it done. All we need to do now is set up the end game or the game over screen which we have here. So again, once this timer goes to zero, it will fire off this event here. So what I've done is I've already set up this widget here, which is again, all I did was right click, user interface, added a background blur with strength of 16 and added some text saying game over. That's all I've got in here. What I'm gonna do for this game over is create a widget like so, which is going to be that game over screen I just made. The return value will be add to viewport like so. And I'm going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, the duration of two seconds, and completed will be quit game. So what it's going to do is put that widget on screen to tell the player the game's over. Two seconds later, the game's going to close. Again, do whatever you want here. So put on a game over screen, which will also display how many kills you got, a button to go to the main menu, a button to retry, so just restart the level, anything like that. And I do have different videos again going over this. So I have a proper game over screen video where I show you how to do all of that good stuff. I have main menu videos, I have pause option menu videos, all this good stuff which you'd want to customize this. I do have videos on those. Now to finish it all off, the final thing is we need to actually start this timer. So we're gonna hold down P, left click to get event begin play, or just go to it if you've already used it. And if you have already used it, hold on S, left click to get a sequence, with then zero going to the code you already have, and then one going to the code we're about to do now. And the code we're about to do now is very simple. It's called function game timer like so, because again, that is the function here, which is gonna start the timer overall. So let's compile, save, and this should now be working for us. So when I hit play in the top right corner, it should say time remaining 15, one second later, it should go down to 14 and 13 and so on, all the way down to zero. And when we get to zero, we should have a game over screen, which simply just says game over, and two seconds later, the game will close. So let's test that out now. We can see time remaining 15, 14, 13, going all the way down, again to zero, when we get our game over screen. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. Again, I've just explained it in good detail there of what we've set up, and let's test that final part now. We're at one, down to zero. We have game over. Two seconds later, the game has closed perfectly like so. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.